Welcome back to Sunday League Moments. Today at home to Edgecombe FC in a crucial lead match. A quick look at the league table and you can see the real gravity of the situation. If Edgecombe win, they will go level with Woolwell and Elberton on points and probably leave AC rooted to the bottom of the lead for the rest of the season. If AC win, they will leapfrog out Edgecombe into sixth place. So both teams want to get the win. AC are quite depleted today. They've got no Ben, no Bernie, no Samip, no Finn, no George and no Jamie. So here's a team lineup. In between the sticks, as always, is Coops. Back four of Jake, Nick, Courtney and James standing in at left back. Midfield of Sherritt, Tom with Callum advanced. And up top, Alex on the left, Will on the right and Gabe through the middle. Worth noting, Alex and Gabe and Courtney are all carrying injuries. Only one sub on the bench, and that's Fraser. So it's Edgecombe who we'll have the first chance with number 11 taking a throw in. Name drop, Dan. Sherratt heads it back in the right direction for AC. So the ball bounces down for number 6. Tom heads it the wrong way, and number 9 steps the ball through towards number 15, who cuts inside of Courtney. Shoots at the near post, but Coops gets plenty behind it to save. <laughs> Free kick now for Edgecombe. Number six takes it, launches it up the field. Nick doesn't make it, and the shot eventually bobbles down for number 15, but Coop saves again, and then James clears his line by booting it into the river. Okay. Oh, 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 Callum. Oh, 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 beautiful. Of Callum doing something good. <laughs> Throwing now for Gabe on this near side. Sends it up towards Sherritt, but it's a poor touch for him and it goes up for a goal kick. And that was sort of the tail of the first half. AC not being able to carve out anything in terms of chances on the edge of the box. However, ball picked up by Sherritt again here. He sticks the ball over the top for Gabe and again tail of the second half. Far too over hit and it falls to their goalkeeper who gives it to their left back. He sends it up the line. Jake heads it against number three and then beats him. Sends it up the line again, looking for Gabe, who's running up against number six from a narrow angle. Charges, has a shot at goal, but it bounces and bobbles well wide of goal. Corner now for Edgetum's number seven, who moves one of the respect cones, standing from the path. Takes it in, headed away, and a snap shot of a volley sails straight wide of goal. That could have gone anywhere. Ball with Edgecombe's number seven. He launches it long. Courtney looks to have this one under control. He misses it and then takes on number 15 like he wasn't even there and like he meant to do that. Throw in from Edgecombe's number 15. He gives it up towards number nine. Sherritt leaves a foot in there on number 15 and it's a free kick. So the free kick is taken by Edgecombe's number seven. High into the box. Number nine beats Coops to the ball as it sails over him. Tom can't keep it out and that's 1-0 to Edgecombe. Fraser's warming up now as number nine takes the corner this time. Headed away only as far as number seven here, who's teed up, but his snapshot dribbles wide of Coops' goal, and it remains 1-0. Oh. Oh. Go on. First sub here, and um, lots of Sunday League teams have to swap kits around for subs. This is a new thing however, swapping shin pads, only at AC, eh? Anyway, Fraser's going on now for Alex. 
Ball with Callum on that far side. Lots of time. He gives it back to Jake. Jake sends it up towards Gabe. Tries to flick it on. But he gets it back anyway off the edge of the defender. He's completely clattered as he he then heads it through to Fraser. Ref could have played the advantage as Fraser was in. But instead it's a free kick to AC. Free kick is taken right footed by Fraser. But it's straight into the wall. Sherritt tries to get it under. The biggest player on the pitch tries to get around the smallest player on the pitch. In their number 7. And edge can clear their lines. Up to this side where James manages to keep it in. He's been closed down, he sends it forwards up towards their number 10 who beats Fraser, sticks the ball over the top, Nick's chasing and Coops has to come off of his line and clear it. Sweeper keeper. Ball now dropping down towards Edgecombe's number four, name drop Martin. He keeps it in on this near side. He's got plenty of time to send it up the line. However, Sherrod gets his foot in there but number four still carries on. Fraser nips in and gives it back to James. James looks up the line, gives it to Gabe. Gabe, heavy touch, tries to round Dan number 11. Dan looks to shield it out, he has to put it out for a throw. So the throwing is taken this time by Fraser, up towards Will, but it's headed away, only as far as Tom with a first time shot, which isn't going anywhere near Joel, but the edge can play blocks it. Sherritt looks to get this ball under control, but he's bundled over by two men. Ref plays on. Will looks to win the ball back, and he does, put the cross in. Sherritt, on the end of it again, has a snap shot, but it's deflected just wide of the post. Not that you really saw, because my camera work, even with a tripod, is still a bit dodgy. The corner is taken on that far side, left footed by James, doesn't beat the first man, and number seven looks to declare it. Fraser sticks in the right direction for Sherritt, but the ref blows for half time. Half time, 1 0 down to Edgecombe. AC, if they get the next goal, the game could go any way. It's anyone's game as it stands. AC trying to get a goal now as Fraser sends it up the line towards Gabe. Gabe up against Dan, number 11. He tries to beat him. Uh, Dan tries to shield him off. Gabe wins the ball back. Shoots one on one but sails wide of goal. Not that you could see because I'm far too zoomed in and John is stood in the way. Ball with Edgecombe's number 12. He sends it forward. Flicked on towards number 15. He's got legs on Nick. He then cuts inside of Jake, has a shot at Coops' near post as he was leaning the other way and he saves it and the ball ricochets off a of 15 and goes out for a goal kick. Good stop from Coops. Ball now with Edgecombe again, bringing the ball forward on the counter, just sending it up the channels. This time towards number 15 again, who lays it off to number 9. <laughs> If you haven't clocked what's just happened, number nine's boot has flown off far, far further than he actually kicked the ball. <laughs> Amazing. Throw in now from number nine with his boot back on. Jake heads it in the wrong direction. Nick here completely barged off the ball by number 15, but he makes his way in. Rounds Coops. Courtney blocks it. Courtney tries to get it clear again, and he eventually shields 15 out for a goal kick. 15 looking to be one of their most dangerous players. Ball with Edgecombe now on that far side from a throw-in, sent into the area, 15 there, again pushes over Nick, but Coops was on hand to save. Free kick chance now for Fraser for AC, he takes it, not the best, but it falls to Callum who nods it on towards Sherritt, but their number four shields out his opposite number in Sherritt and their keeper can easily collect. Ball with Edgecombe now through the middle, number seven skips away from Sherritt and has a shot. The 
There's not much you can do about efforts like that. Coops was a bit far off his line and no one really closed him down. But when you pull off a shot which is dead straight from about 40 yards, there's not a lot you can do. 2-0 to Edgecombe and it's now crucial AC get the next goal. As Alex makes his way on and he replaces Sherritt in midfield. Throw in now for Edgecombe on this near side. Ball falls down towards number 7. Tom clears it the wrong way. Jake slices his clearance. Ball falls down for Courtney. He sticks it up in the air. James lets it bounce and the Edgerton player beats him in the air. He lays it off to his teammate in number 10 who drills it into the bottom corner and suddenly that's 3-0 and Edgerton look to have sealed the game off. However, anything's possible. AC have come from 3-0 down before. So we'll have to see how this game pans out as Sherritt now goes back on the pitch for Alex who in that minute he was back on picked up an injury. Coops now with a goal kick. Not the best at all but Sherritt has plenty of time to bring it down and turn their number seven. He sends the ball over the top looking for Fraser. Their keeper's off his line. Fraser hits it with his left and it strikes the top of the crossbar and it's when those things don't go your way you just know that it's not going to be AC's day as Edgecombe clear it upfield. Ball now with Edgecombe again. Number 10 playing it forwards towards number seven. Running at Jake and Nick has a pop shot at Coops' near corner and he's down low well to make the save. Corner for Edgecombe now, taken. Number five has time to chest it down and then fire it into the back of the net. And that's 4-0. And AC haven't come from 4-0 down before. And they certainly won't be doing today. And that was actually a former AC player in Tom. Number 5. Unfortunately, we can't end the game here. We have to play out the full 90 minutes as Jabe, who's dropped into midfield, gives it to Jake at right back. Jake sends it up the line towards Fraser. Fraser's got Tom in the middle, who's only ever scored two goals in his career, and they've both been this season. He sends it in. Tom with a volley, but it hits his shin and goes well over the bar. From that goal kick, Edgecombe's keeper plays it out the back. He gives it to his right back. His right back, Martin, gives it to his centre half, number 11 in Dan. He switches it over to his left back, number three, who I think is called Charlie, and is also former AC. He cuts inside of Gabe, gives it inside towards number nine. Number nine sends it forwards towards number ten. Ten gives it to three. Three gives it to ten. Ten gives it to fifteen, I imagine that is. Who gives it to ten, running in on goal, fires it into the back of the net. That's about nine or ten passes, building from the back, and Edgecombe suddenly a 5 0 up. And this is amazingly the first player to also celebrate in front of my camera so fair play 5-0 to Edgecombe FC an absolute rout it's not that AC have particularly played poorly it's just they haven't created enough chances as the ball goes over the top now Tom's tripped or by himself running in on goal ball finds Fraser who plays it in towards the middle Tom eventually gets barged off the ball by number six and Edgecombe can clear their lines Suddenly, AC are looking more lively up top. Ball with Edgecombe now, number 11, Dan. But Nick clears it, starts a counter-attack. He gives it to Tom. Tom, charging forward, gives it to Will. Look at Nick bursting through the centre as Will cuts it onto his right foot and it agonisingly dribbles wide of that post. You can't say AC haven't had the chances. It could have been very, very different this game. However, it hasn't been. It's 5-0 to Edgecombe and you can't say they haven't bossed the midfield as Will now plays it forwards to Tom who rounds their keeper not confident on his left foot so cuts it back on in his right he eventually gets the shot away which their keeper saves he then plays it back to Will who shoots and their keeper saves it in the near post Corner from James on this near side. He sends it in. 
It finds Callum on that far side. He goes to play it back towards Will. Will, I don't know whether this is a cross or a shot. I hope it's a cross. As he sends it in, it's headed away by the extra man. Then it's nodded down. And then the ref blows up for full time. Five nil. It's finished to Edgecom FC, and the game AC were targeting to win. You can blame the l missing players. You can blame the lack of chances taken. You can blame the defensive set piece plays. It's a it's a very very poor result for AC. Only way is to look forward. They play Elba and Villa on Wednesday. Actually, they already have played Albert and Villa on Wednesday. I'm editing these videos very, very late. Here's what the league table looks like after today's game. Edgecombe FC, there you see, level with Wilwell and Albert and AC rooted to bottom of the league. And it's the first time John will have taken them to finish bottom of the league, but it is top league. So what do you expect? Coops doesn't look happy. And what is there to say other than thanks for watching and Cheerio.